we've got uh, the next speaker is uh, Paul Guru. He's a uh, a resident of Melbourne, I'm not quite sure which uh, suburb, but Paul is a member of Love It and Leave It, uh, and also uh, he's involved in TBC, and uh, he's quite uh, passionate, and, uh, you know, he's sort of like, I see him everywhere on Facebook, you know, he's very sort of, he gets around sort of thing, so he's another Australian patriot, uh, you know, a really sort of, you know, any Australian patriot I've got to respect for, and we should encourage patriotism and nationalism because it's natural, it's natural to love what is beautiful and love your country sort of thing and so when I see any patriot doesn't matter what group um, you know I, brothers and sisters arm and arm you know I'd support them in any way possible and promote them so it's great to see so many different people here today with the TBC uh, UPF different groups here um, you know there's representation from a lot of different groups and smaller um, people that are independent but I'd like to uh, introduce Paul Guru here he is Paul Guru thank you Paul Thanks, Nick. Morning. Afternoon. Afternoon, everybody. You don't need that. Good. <laughs> you idiot. Now, I, um, yeah, I don't like doing a public speaking thing too often. I don't like just like to be a big mouth most of the time. But uh, today I've got a few things I really want to say. I'm here today representing the Australia Love It or Leave It Party, of which Kim Vuga is head of. You would have seen her on the TV on several things and... YouTuber, check her out. Um, Kim apologised she can't be here today because she's had to have um, surgery. Kim and, and myself have also worked in care services for many, many years. We, um, yeah, feel this is, this is yeah, really, really wrong, just to start off with. Now, the second thing I want to say before we kick off, the reason I'm wearing this, TBC jacket. I'm a very, very big fan of the True Blue crew. Thank you, guys. They're a group that's come new to our movement and they've really done some fantastic work and they're getting a really shit look in the media. And they don't deserve it. A shit look they don't deserve. They're doing some bloody good stuff and they're good people. Give them a look. Learn a little bit about them. Get involved there. Terrific. Thank you, True Blue Poo. Okay, just a good little bit. Uh, Judge Brook Memorial Village was the original name of the centre over here. Over on October 25th, 1956, the year of the Olympics in Melbourne, and also the year that my wonderful late parents met. So myself? Um, yeah, that was, it was opened by the Melbourne City Mission at that time and ran very successfully for 59 years by City Mission. Um, I've, I've heard, heard from family members and others, locals of the area, that it's been run very well over those 59 years by City Mission. But unfortunately last year it was uh, taken over by St Vincent's. And they look like they've sold it out to the, uh, gone for the uh, Filthy Luger and sold it out to the Almighty Dollar and now they're going to open these units that weren't supposed to be inhabitable. They've spent lots and lots of money changing them and they're going to put refugees in them. Now, I, I don't know what other people think about that, but I think that's pretty ordinary. Bullshit. It's graceful. It's graceful. I grew up, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of things in the media um, about people saying, all of these people that have come from other places today. I grew up about 10 minutes from here. Um, I worked in Eltham for 10 years, and I now live about 15 minutes from here. So I suppose I could kind of call myself a local enough. So, yeah, so I do, I do speak with a little bit of local knowledge. Um, yeah, we look, we, we look at Judgebrook Home as, as a place where people go. You know, nursing homes, they've, they're always one of those things that people don't like to talk about, things like that. You know, it's old people, it's death, it's all sad stuff usually. But the thing is, this is these people's home. Um, do these people deserve to be safe in their home? Do these people deserve the right to be safe? Yeah. Yes, of course, of course they do. Of course they bloody do. do these people, you know, d deserve to have all sorts of people, um, changes made. Look, these are old people. I mean, we all know an old person, whether it's their mum, dad, uncle, auntie, or next door neighbour. They don't like change, okay? They don't like change, the old folk. Now, what's going to happen over here is there's going to be some bloody big changes. Now, I'd like to ask 
um, a few questions that I haven't heard any answers to. When these refugees move in, 120 I'm told are moving in, 120. 120. We're told it's a two year deal. Right. So how does that work? Is that 120 that are just going to stay there for the two years? What if one of the women has a baby? Are they allowed to stay? Or do we stay at 120? What if some of them move out to the community? Do we bring some more in and get the number back up to 120? What the fuck happens at the end of the two years? What are we going to do with them then? They're telling us that they're going to make it low-cost housing for the elderly. What the fuck are they going to do with 120 refugees that need to be there now? What a load of fucking shit! A load of bullshit they're giving us! They're feeding us rubbish! All of us, all of us are being fed rubbish! From the bottom, from Judge Brook, from the Catholic Church, all the way up to Malcolm Turnbull and federal government. They're all feeding us bullshit. Don't listen to it. Don't listen to the mainstream media. Sorry my media friend over there has just walked up. I just saw the word media as I said it. <laughs> They're feeding us a load of shit. It's as simple as that. Don't listen to it. Don't listen to it. Okay, also a few other little things. I thought I just had to think about. Okay, originally, but we were told that it was going to be women and children only brought in here. Now we're told it's women, children and families. Okay, so we're bringing men in here. Okay, other places where we've seen refugee settlements allowed, such as Europe, Germany, Sweden, London, London. Greece. Greece. Oh, Greece. Greece is a film. Oh, that's a really bad one. That's a really bad one. Greece. We've seen some pretty horrible shit going on over there, haven't we? There hasn't been a real lot of integration and not a lot of appreciation shown by the uh, the newcomers who have been welcomed to their, these lands. Not a lot of appreciation at all, has there? Said we've seen rape, pillaging, mass, massive gangs starting. You know, we had the, the, the thing on uh, New Year's Eve. Over a thousand women raped in a night. Over a thousand women. Look at you all. Can all the women put up their hands, please? There you go. Would you feel safe? No. Thank you. All the men, put up your hands, please. Do you want to protect our women? Yeah. Thank you. That's what it's all about. Hasn't worked anywhere else. Not going to work here. Okay, a few little things. What's going to happen when these people move in? I've been told, now yeah, I'm not sure um, of the facts here, this is just what I've been told, and if someone could give, give me a definite fact on it, great, fantastic. So don't take this as gospel. Um, I've been told that during, there was a meeting of the families um, with, with, with the home when this was all started. And at the meeting, the question was asked, will these people be allowed to come out to the local community? Now, the answer given at the time was that yes, they will. They'll be allowed to come out in the local community, and they will be given Australian citizenship and be Australians just like you and me. Now, I don't know. I mean, I look at areas like Dandenong, Noble Park, our friends, the Apex Gang, the Apex Gang. We're looking forward to the Apex Gang chapter kicking off in Eltham. No. In this beautiful area. Look at this. It's a bloody beautiful area. I love Eltham. I love this area. It's fantastic. As I said, I've, I've known it all my life. Any local... Put your hand up if you're a local. Yes. Beautiful. Look at that. Thank you, locals, for coming down. Guess what? All your three and four million dollar houses? Guess how high your insurance premiums are going to be in the next few years? Any BMW drivers here? Any Audi drivers? Ta-da! Check your car park. Get yourself a club lock. Watch your insurance premiums rise. All right, guys, that's about all I've got to say to you today. I just thought I'd say my bit and say, yeah, we are, we are all here. And we're not fucking going anywhere. We're here. We're here for the people in that building over there. Not those feral fucking filth up there. They scum up there. Oh, one last thing. I wore today... Just out of respect for one of my great heroes, I wore my Peter Brock t-shirt.
Dev Brock Lloyd stuff him. Oh, Bev. What was her name? Bev. Bev McIntosh. Bev McIntosh. After 27 years, you wouldn't even marry her. She's such a disgusting, tranny looking bloody thing. <laughs> Change her name by deep pole to Brock. She laid stuff in for 27 years. I'm 49 years old. I've been a fan of him since I was a kid. I love the bloke, and I think he'd be disgusted if he was here today to see the way his ex-partner is behaving and what she's wanting to do to the beautiful area he grew up in and made famous. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good on, good on, good on you, Guru. That's a powerful speech, and... What he says, you know, we've all sort of, many of us feel, we all feel the same way, really, you know, coming from Guru, very passionate. Um, yeah, it's not going to be a happy story, like Paul said. We saw what's happened in uh, in places like uh, Noble Park and Dandenong with the Apex Gang, and it doesn't matter where in Australia, whether it's Sydney, Melbourne, uh, Adelaide, it's just a, a disaster, you know, and uh, it just goes to show the total lack of care of government to say, it's going to be all right, she'll be all right. You know, you just got to accept these refugees that come from war zones, they bring in disease. We know that after five years, after five years of these refugees being in Australia, 85% of them are still on welfare. I don't think that's right, that we go to work, we pay high taxes, we get screwed over. I'm sick and tired of being screwed by the government and they don't mind paying tax but when it's used appropriately. But when you've got money that's being used to fund this colonisation of Australia with these refugees, to have large families, and they're encouraged to have large families, because the more kids they have, the more money they get from the government. So it's never ending, and really, the refugee program that Australia's got, that we signed in 1951, the UN Protocol on Refugees, we have to get out of it. We have to get out of this ridiculous document that's outdated and is not serving the national interest. Since 1951, there's been over 900,000 refugees, and my mother was a refugee. She was a Russian refugee from China. But things were very different in 1951 when refugees came here in post-Second World War from Europe. We had jobs, and we had an immigration policy that chose people on compatibility, and that's how it should be. At the moment, we've got an immigration policy that's based on bringing incompatible people here who don't have any skills, don't speak English, and they're a burden on the taxpayer. And that's just an absolute, you know, not only is it colonisation and de gender, uh, sorry, genocide of Australia, but it's creating an unsustainable situation where Centrelink is being robbed on a daily basis. And I don't go to work to see Centrelink robbed on a daily basis. Tune in tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye for now.